There are issues within the church, whether seminaries, colleges, uh, local churches, mega church pastors recently who declared uh, there's no conflict between homosexuality and scripture. And they don't really have a leg to stand on when it comes to evaluating the theological underpinnings. Ann Polk is the executive director of RestoredHopeNetwork.org, which postulates you are not born gay and you can change if you so desire. There are thousands of individuals who have been freed by the power of Jesus Christ from homosexuality throughout the United States, both men and women. Restored Hope Network grew out of the ashes of the implosion in 2013 of Exodus International, an umbrella organization of ex-gay ministries. The former leadership of Exodus now even claims it was all a farce and you cannot change after all. Did Exodus make gay people straight? Exodus did not make gay people straight. No, there was never a time when any one person, organization, therapy, support group, prayer meeting made gay people straight. Exodus did not say at any time that it was in the business of converting people from gay to straight. It was in the business of helping people to live in obedience. What happened to Exodus International? The leadership of Exodus International changed over the years. I had the double honor of serving as their president from 1991 to 1993, and I did quite a bit of work with them over the decades. I will always thank God for that opportunity. But as the leadership shifted, the views of the leadership shifted as well to a more gay affirming position. Many of us who were in leadership at that time felt that we could no longer support the direction Exodus was going. And I think a number of member ministries and people who had previously supported Exodus felt the same way. Explain the pressure from the world on the evangelical community to accept unrepentant homosexuals. Jerry, we are in the midst of a crusade by which the culture is saying to the church, you need to either be converted or you need to be silenced. This applies to a number of issues, including homosexuality. And now comes a new film from Netflix that postulates that the whole ex-gay movement is a farce and is actually harmful to people. I personally came out of the homosexual lifestyle. And we're just saying that if you want to change, there is a way to do it. I spent a lot of time thinking, how did I believe that? We were the leaders of the ex-gay movement. One of the key guests of Pray Away, the poster child, if you will, of the ex-ex-gay movement, is John Polk, former husband of Ann Polk. My husband went back into the gay lifestyle, but I myself came out of the gay lifestyle. So uh, you have the opportunity to continue on in walking with Christ or to abandon your goal of walking free from it. Many people use my ex-husband to proclaim that a person cannot leave homosexuality. He himself will say that. And yet, his former spouse, that would be me, came out of homosexuality and has remained out. I'm very happy to be walking with the Lord and submitting my sexuality to a higher purpose. Ironically, in the trailer for Pray Away, some people are featured who undermine the entire premise of their film. It was 13 years for me. Four for me. We both walked away from it. Just recently, we were surprised to see the preview of Pray Away, and we're the second faces in, in the film. And we were not uh, asked to do to be in the film. We weren't told we were going to be in it. So we were pretty surprised that suddenly we were uh, going to be a face in this uh, Pray Away documentary that really goes against everything we believe. We've never gone back. Um, and yeah, it was so surprising. And the thing that really got me was if you're gonna have me in there, then let me tell my story also. Though I understand they don't have to do that, but it just, there are other stories out there just like us, and we know tons of people like us that have left 
homosexuality, LGBTQ, and never have gone back. We've been married this year, it'll be 33 years. We have four kids and five grandbabies. God has given me a life I could never even imagine. I have four children, I have a husband who loves me, I have now grandkids. It's things I would have never imagined in my life. I'm very thankful for what God has done. I don't feel I've given, I mean, of course you give things up, right? But in the end, what he's given me back feels like I've given nothing up. He's only fulfilled me. And and the thing is, we're just, we just represent two people we literally know hundreds of people that have not gone back to the gay life. So the entire premise of the film is not true. And in fact, we're in it. it proves that. The experience of the Coles is not unique, as author and counselor and former homosexual Stephen Black has found in his research. We had 1,200 client folders intact in, in 2012. And so we gathered those client folders and we did a survey and we reached out to these people and we were able to make contact with 500. The reality is a 72 to 73 percent of people that actually gave at least one year of their life, many of them more than one year, a pastoral care and support group came away living a life fully surrendered to Jesus Christ as Lord. Tragically, information on these kinds of transformations is widely suppressed or just unknown, even in many church circles today. This has led to great confusion. Right now, there's a mishmash of beliefs that are actually leading to gay evangelical Christianity, whether that's in uh, theological books or megachurch pastors who are embracing some degree of same-sex relationship involved in the church body and now calling it not sin. But the problem is, it's contra their words are contradicting the very Word of God. The person, Jesus Christ, is the Word of God. So if we invalidate Him, we've cut the legs off of Christianity. Um, and I don't know how people can actually justify that. The evangelical left's approach is to revise. It's a revisionist movement. It not only seeks to revise our understanding of homosexuality, it also wants to revise our understanding of salvation itself. Progressive Christianity teaches uh, that there are many ways to God, that there are many sources of truth, and that the traditional view of sexuality and family should be revised to include homosexuality, transgenderism, and bisexuality.